Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Church on Sunday the 10th of January. You'll notice that I'm up at Hardy's Monument and as we enter another national lockdown we've been told to stay at home and only go out for essential reasons or each day for some exercise. And today I'm taking my exercise up at Hardy's Monument and I'm just going to pan the camera round so that you can see the views that I've got from up here. It's beautiful. It's a cold evening. I'm filming this on Thursday and the sun is setting on Weymouth. And it's beautiful, it's beautiful. So as we start our service, I'm just gonna read some words from Psalm 103. Let's pray. It says in Psalm 103, he forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from death and crowns you with love and compassion. He fills your life with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And so, Lord, we pray as we come into your presence now, as we worship together, we pray that you meet with us. We pray that your Holy Spirit will come wherever we are, and meet with us now. Come Holy Spirit. Amen. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of
Today's reading is taken from 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, strangers in the world, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. Kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you, when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. This is the word of the Lord. Over the next six weeks, we're going to spend time together reading and exploring 1 Peter. This letter was written by Peter to offer hope to persecuted Christians, to help and guide them so they were able to lead their lives in a way that was constant and consistent with the following of Jesus. It's a letter that powerfully reminds Christians, both then and today, that suffering is to be expected. But even when we face hardship, we have hope in Jesus. Whilst we probably can't even imagine the hardship faced by the persecuted Christians of the early church, or Christians around the world today who are persecuted, we are currently going through a challenging time, like none of us have experienced before. And my hope and prayer is that as we explore the letter of 1 Peter, our faith will deepen and God will speak to us through it. Now, the letter was written to Christians who lived across an area of Asia Minor, that's current day Turkey. Five areas are listed, you can see them at the beginning of the chapter, and these areas were Roman provinces under Roman rule. Living under Roman authority, these dispersed Christians received hostility and harassment every single day of their lives. If you haven't already read, read it right through, I'd encourage you over the next week to do that. It's a fairly short letter and uh, it will give you an overview of the whole letter as we then explore each week, um, each section in more depth. And before I go on to look at today's passage, I thought it would be really helpful to give you a bit of an overview of the letter. The letter starts with a greeting and a song of praise. And then the rest of the letter largely fits into three sections. Firstly, that as followers of Jesus, they have a new family identity. Peter really wants to make that clear. 
And he uses a lot of Old Testament images and applies them to these new Christians. So that while they may not be Israelites, they can identify with this imagery and know that they too are part of God's family. They are a holy people in the wilderness. They are the new covenant people. And he's reinforcing to them that they have a new family identity. The next section, Peter speaks into their suffering. He calls them to submit to Roman rule. Fear God, he says, fear God and honour the emperor. That's chapter 2, verse 17. He calls them to love their enemies. He calls them to accept their suffering. And he reminds them that Jesus suffered for them. So that's the second section. And then in the third section, Peter reminds them of Jesus's promises of future hope. No matter what hardship they are going through on earth, no matter what hardship we face on earth, we have a hope in salvation in Jesus. He is our living hope. And he reminds them of who the real enemy is. That spiritual forces are at work on earth, but that we are to resist evil and stand firm in faith. 1 Peter is all about hope in the midst of suffering, that we are God's people and we live under the rule of a different king. And further, that when we face hardship and suffering, it gives us the opportunity to show others the generous love of Jesus. The other day, before we went into lockdown, we met some friends up at Hardy's Monument, where I am now, for a dog walk. Our friends had driven from Salisbury, and so I thought it would be a great place because the views up here are beautiful. You can see across Weymouth and Portland, and I believe, if I'm right, you can see five different counties on a clear day. And I'm just going to pan around again so you can see. The sun is going down. But I can see the cruise ships, I can see Portland, I can see Dorchester. It's stunning and it's beautiful. You see the sun going down. So we said to our friends, why don't you meet us up here? They'd never been here before and we thought we would show them the beauty of Dorset. Well, on this particular day, you could see nothing. You could barely even see the top of Hardy's Monument. It was thick fog. We might as well have met our friends in a cloudy car park. I was trying to explain the views that we can see now, but I was failing miserably. Hardy's Monument in the clouds is just not the same. Yet, I was reminded, it is the same. It's just that my eyes can't see it. The views are still there. The five counties are still there. The sea, Portland, Weymouth, and the sun is still shining. It's all still there. It's just above the clouds. It's above the clouds. And so my eyes can't see the beauty. This letter written by Peter is a reminder that when it feels like we're in thick fog, when it's dark and gloomy, we can still, and we can easily lose our way, Jesus is still 
the promise of salvation. This is still real. When we face trials and hardship, it can feel like we're in the midst of fog. It can feel like the fog prevents us from experiencing God's love and joy and peace. But if we trust and believe in him through the hardship, the end result of your faith is the salvation of our souls. And Peter says, this will never perish. We are God's people. And he doesn't promise that our earthly life will be easy, but he does promise that he will be with us. Right at the beginning of this letter, Peter writes this. You have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. We have been chosen by the Father. We have been sanctified by the Spirit. We have been saved by Jesus. And I love the word sanctified because it means that we are made holy. We are living temples of the Holy Spirit. As a follower of Jesus, right now, today, no matter where you are, no matter how you are feeling, you are one of God's holy people. God is at work in your life. You might not feel holy, you might not even feel like you can see God at work, but he is at work in your life. The current situation across our country may weigh heavily on you. You might feel surrounded by thick cloud, but that doesn't change the promise. It doesn't change the truth. The sun is still shining, the views are still there, and Peter wants us to look above the clouds and see the hope that is Jesus. So today, no matter how you're feeling, no matter how thick the cloud is, Jesus wants to meet you. He wants to remind you that you are chosen by God, that you are made holy by his spirit, and you are saved by the blood of Jesus. So let's pray. Father, we thank you that you know each of us, that you created us in your image, that you love us. And we pray now, Holy Spirit, come. We pray that whatever clouds, however thick they are, whatever clouds are in our lives at the moment, that you help us to see above the clouds, that you help us to see your hope, your love and your peace today. So fill us, Holy Spirit. Amen. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned.
join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. As we come to the end of our service, I just leave the camera on the beautiful sun. And I just pray a prayer of blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you and all those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Do join us again next week as we continue our sermon series looking at the letter of 1 Peter. <laughs>